Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I've got Josh over today and we're going to be playing around making our own cement rocks. I bought this rubber rock mold from Woodland Scenics. It was from a model railroad store and they use this for making their, you know, rock dioramas. So we're going to try and make cement rocks using this mold. Okay, so I used to work in the uh, concrete paver industry and I have some old samples left over. Uh, I've brought those down. I've got three different pigments here. They're iron oxide pigments. I've got a black, a red, and a yellow. We're gonna work with those and we should be able to make a range of grays, beiges, browns, oranges, all that kind of stuff. Um, I brought a little bit of white cement for making lighter colors. And then Nigel picked up this hydraulic cement as well. And that's what we're gonna be working with for materials. I'm going to brush some mineral oil on the mold as a release agent. So just a light coating with a toothbrush here. That should help the concrete release from the mold. That's the plan anyway. We don't know what'll happen. We're kind of in uncharted territory here. The cement that we have sets in about three to 10 minutes. The stuff I got, the hydraulic cement, says three to five minutes setting time. And the cement Josh has it takes about 10 minutes, so hopefully we can get it done in the mold without it hardening on us. It's going to be a challenge, I think. I've got the mold all ready, so it makes up our first batch of cement. We've got three containers. The largest one, we're mixing up a, the natural gray color of the cement. In the medium-sized container here, we're mixing up the orange. orange color or the reddish orange color. And the smallest container, we've got our darkest color, a dark gray, it'll probably turn out. So we're gonna mix them all together. We've estimated the quantity to fill the mold and we're gonna put the colors in and try and mix them a little bit, but not too much to kind of get a natural rock color. On the package, there's an example of a finished rock that's been painted up. And you can see it's got the grays and the reddish tinges in it. So that's kind of the look that I'm going for. So how much colorant do you add, Josh? Um, no more than about a 20th of the amount of cement. Okay. So 1 20th or less for coloring. Let's see that's... Do you want it more on the reddish end of I, I prefer more reddish, orange? yeah, like an iron oxide color. Not so much orangish. So. Well, a little bit orange, but... So a bit of yellow. We just don't want red. it too bright that it looks artificial. Yeah. Yeah. You don't typically get that in gray cement anyway. Okay. You need white to get the really bright colors. Yeah, it looks pretty naturally. Okay. So our colorant is added to the mixes. I've added some uh, pigment into the onto the cement piles here in these uh, containers. And what I'm going to do that I've done this so that you can see about how much pigment I'm putting in. Uh, it's about no more than a 20th or so of the amount of cement. But what I'm gonna do now, especially since the cement dries so fast, but you wanna do this anyway, is I'm gonna mix the pigments into the cement before we add water. So that that's thoroughly mixed in. Um, I'm also gonna add just a small amount of sand and that'll help break up the cement clumps and the pigment clumps um, and help everything mix together. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of sand to each bucket. I don't need to do that in the container that doesn't have pigment in it. Okay, so now I'm just going to thoroughly mix these up until I'm not seeing any more pigment in it. Everything's uniform. And then I'm going to mix it a little more after that. And you don't really get to see your color until it's all wet and made into cement, right? Right. Yeah. So you can't tell, really tell what you have until it's done. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, but... We may have to make many trials today until we get it right. I did make some clay examples of the rocks that you get from the molds. So there, you can see them there. Just to try it out and see what it looks like. And I was really pleased with the uh, overall look of it all. It looks very natural and look perfect in a bonsai landscape. So another reason we're using the, uh, these pigments as opposed to just maybe painting the surface afterwards 
is that this won't really fade over time nearly as much. It won't come off the concrete. I see. It's in the concrete, so you're not going to lose that color right. after 10 years or whatever. And if you scratched or chipped the concrete, it would you'd, you wouldn't see it. it would, you wouldn't notice it because it's right in the concrete color. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. I think that's so we're ready for water? We are ready for water. Oh, okay. So the instructions say about half as much water as cement. Okay. Do you know how much is in here? <laughs> no. Um, I have an idea of what's in here, but I measured it out with this. I found before, thing. I just been adding it gradually. Okay. And it, it gets to a paste and then you just make it a little more runny than a paste and it seems to work okay. Okay. Want to try that? Yeah, we're gonna okay. have to do it with uh, kind of all three at once. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to add the water to the cement now. So I'll, we're gonna try and do all three at, at kind of at once. So add a bit in here. It's looking quite good. It's uh, kind of like a putty-like texture now. Just needs a little more water. Okay, the base gray color is ready. Yep, I think we better go ahead and all right, get this all mixed together. Adding it to the... Okay, so I've got the mold here. So we're just gonna add blotches of it in at a time. Sure. All right, try and kind of make it in layers if we can. Yeah, I think not much working time with this, is it? No. But, uh, yeah, I think we better get the rest of the... Uh... That, that's not even close to enough, is it? <laughs> no, we might have to mix some more up. I'll just start mixing it in here. Okay, I'll try and get this out. And we'll see how it looks. And then, you know, we can adjust our techniques. And You're not supposed to handle this with your hands. It says to wear... It's caustic. Latex gloves, but... Uh, I don't know. I find if you wash your hands right after, it doesn't really hurt your hands too much. I got tough skin. Yeah, it's very, very basic. Okay. So it's not, it's the opposite of acid. It's not going to eat away at your skin, but it will really dry it out and... Right. It's not good for your skin, for sure. Yeah. Probably carcinogenic, too. Definitely wouldn't want to breathe it in. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll, I'll push this around. Maybe it'll kind of mix the different colors a bit and... Yeah, I think the, they're pretty subtly different, so... Okay. Especially since we didn't get great mixing. This hydraulic cement dries quite strong. I've used it before. Just pushing it all into the fine parts of the mold so we don't get any water oh, bubbles or there. air bubbles, I mean. Josh is mixing up more cement to fill the mold right to the top. Yeah, I thought you could probably make these concrete molds and then you could almost make a pot out of it if you kind yeah. of made four sides or something. Yeah. Make some texture on a pot anyway or something. A lot of possibilities with it, if it works. Won't be the first time I haven't succeeded at something. <laughs> Here's our concrete rocks drying in the mold. So we'll let that set before we remove it. It's been just over half an hour. So we're gonna try and get our rocks out of the mold now and see what they look like. So here we go. Let's just do it carefully, I guess. Seems to be coming, oh. Just the edges are a little brittle. Might have gone over the edges a little bit. Yeah. Too, so. Seems to be coming out of the mold just fine. That uh, mineral oil seemed to work. It's not sticking much at all. Bit on this side. Kind of like getting a tree out of a pot. <laughs> have to work away at the edges. Don't want to break it in two, but I think it's coming. Oh, there it comes. Almost out. It feels warm. There it is. 
So there's our rock face. Mm-hmm. I would say our coloring wasn't totally successful. <laughs> I think we got the right colors, we just didn't get the right blending. Yeah, the colors actually look really good. I think we should mix up one big giant vat of the gray and then add the colored stuff to it and stir it in, do you think? And and maybe we'll get some subtle variation if we don't stir it too much or something like that. Now this could change color as it dries too. But uh, yeah, the, the lines are a little too a little too defined, aren't they? Yeah. But not too bad. We need to make sure we push it in a little harder, I guess, too. Yeah. Because that end is... If you compare it with the uh, the picture, the colors are definitely really good. Just need a bit of uh, blending. Yeah, it's not bad. It's good first try. Good first try, yeah. Okay. We can probably leave that in the... Uh, the greenhouse? In the greenhouse, yeah. All right. I think it turned out pretty good for our first try. So hopefully we can improve it on try number two. Okay, so last time um, the, the pigment was a little splotchy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try mixing the pigment into the sand before adding cement, just to try to break up the pigment particles a little bit more. Okay, sounds good. Um, maybe about a third as much yellow as red and the red will come through a little stronger. Okay. So it's, it's a pretty reddish tone overall, yeah. just a little bit into the orange. Um, and then for the black, I happen to know that this specific black pigment, although you can't see it from the, from the granules, it does tend to come out a little bluish. I see. So I also add a little bit of orange or red into that. Uh, just to kind of stop that because yeah. th that's not really a, a natural color for most no, rocks. It's no, more to, into the, the gray towards the brown side of things. Yeah, something that tones with the reddish color a bit more and the gray. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm just going to take the, the end of the spoon and try to crush the, the pigment into the sand. See the red color. Yep. So now I've measured out the cement and added it to the color. I still need to mix those two together before we add some water. But uh, hopefully we'll see better results with this method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we want the color very subtle in the rock, in the final rock, right? We just want. Yeah. Just enough that you notice there's some color variation. And mine is very putty-like right now. All right. I think we better go ahead and okay. get it in the mold. Okay, right, here we go. You want to do that, I'll start okay. pushing I'll it start in. smoothing it in. This one's gonna work, Josh, I know it. I think so. Okay, this is the second attempt, and I'm going to try taking it out of the mold now. So I'll release the edges first. Okay, it's coming out now. I don't think we left this one as long as the last one. No, this is uh, really pushing the limits here. Okay, there it is. Came out of the mold nice and clean. Now, here we go. We're gonna turn it over. <laughs> See what it looks like. Uh-huh. Well, there is some color variation. Yeah, we'll have to... Uh... We'll have to let it dry. Yeah. It's definitely subtle. Yep. It's there too. We may have gone too far in the other direction, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. All right. We'll put this in the greenhouse to cure. We try and put stripes in the mix. Yeah. And then we'll get it out of the pan and put it in the mold. Something like that. So yeah. we kind of get horizontal stripes. 
Yeah. If we can do it. So if we can say we're using this container, yeah. Um, we'll take some dark gray. We'll put it in. We'll take some pink. We'll put it in. Okay. Then we'll pour the regular gray on top, and then we'll just take the spoon and only stir it a little bit in just one direction. Sideways, yeah. And then we'll, yeah, we'll just we'll keep things moving in the one direction and just scoop it out into there. Yeah, okay. This mold is working really well, actually, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I was a little worried. This mold cost, I think it was like 18 or $19. I yeah. thought, well, it's quite expensive. But then I thought, well, if you can reuse it and make a lot of different patterns and stuff, it, it might be worth it. So. Yeah. They do sell other, this was just one style. There was another two different styles of rock faces. They were all similar to this, but just a different pattern. So I'm gonna use a little bit less of the red than last time, since we're making more of a pink and we're also putting it into lighter concrete. So it'll overpower that more, come out as a brighter color. So I'm gonna use a little less red and no yellow. We don't want so much of an orangey look as more of a pinkish. And I'm doing the same thing as before, just mixing the the pigment into the sand because that worked well last time. You're using the white sand this time, right? Yes, I'm using yeah. white sand. White sand. Here's an example of a granite rock. And you can see the color. So this is kind of what we're trying to duplicate. So Josh was carrying this around with him in his car. <laughs> Luckily he wasn't pulled over. <laughs> You never thought of that, did you, Josh? I didn't. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try and get a little bit lighter of a base color. So I've got about a 50-50 mix of white and gray cement for our base gray. Uh, the, the gray will overpower the white, so it's not gonna be 50% lighter, maybe 25% lighter. Um, here in our black mix, it's just gonna be the regular gray cement again. There's no point in mixing white and black. You're just gonna come back to gray. Right. And finally, in our pink mix, again, I've used about 50-50 white and gray to, to kind of make a, a pinkish tone. I don't really want to use full-on white cement uh, since we're not fully blending the cements together. I don't know how they're gonna bond together. And the white takes a lot longer to dry. So different drying rates might affect the strength yeah. of the, the piece as well. Yeah. Okay, mine's ready, Josh. All right. I am just about ready to, so I'm just going to lay some okay. splotches of yeah. these colors on the bottom. We're going to stir in a horizontal pattern. Yep. Okay, we'll try something like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to take some of this, lay it all out on top. Secret will be the mixing, on it? Yep. And then I'm gonna take this spoon. I'm just gonna mix so it gets stripes in. Eh? Yep. Mix in one direction. Isn't that the name of a group? One direction, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm gonna just scoop this out and try to kind of lay it in. Keeping the same orientation. Yep. Scooping in the in well, one direction. Well, I can direction see the stripes already, so. Laying it out in the one direction. You keep mentioning one direction. I think you <laughs> like that group. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're going to need to mix up some more of the main batch. Right, the more gray dip as a backing layer, right? Yeah. And just for a little bit of filling in. And this will let dry a lot longer because it has the other cement mixed in with it. Yeah, I believe that white is gonna take longer. Yeah. Spread that out with my fingers to yeah. try to get it all in the front spots. Yeah. Maybe we didn't quite make enough, but it's okay if there's some spots that don't have stripes. We never do quite make enough, do we? No, we don't. We should learn our lesson. Underestimate. So I brought down the trees that Nigel and I worked on the last time we did a video together, uh, just so you could see where they were at. This is the princess earrings. As you can see, it's recovered nicely from its repot. It's growing pretty bushy. 
and I've just left that alone. Let it do its thing. Um, I actually haven't even looked at it. I should probably go in and make sure that there aren't any buds where I don't want them. Um, I've also got the Natal ficus here. Uh, I know it looks a little sad right now, but I actually took it home. We repotted it maybe six weeks ago, I think, and it just took off. So I've actually already trimmed it back. Uh, I took probably more than half the foliage off because it was just growing in these long straight branches. And now that I cut it back to about four or five leaves on each branch, you can see the little back buds coming in uh, near the base of a lot of the leaves. So it'll have a whole bunch of new branches in different directions, which is exactly what I want. Ah, so the first one, the color difference is really obvious, but the second one, it's very subtle and maybe somewhere halfway between there, it'd be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah. But yeah, getting closer, I think. Yep. Excellent. We've done three trials. We're letting the third one dry, but Josh has got to head out now. So thanks for coming down today, Josh. And thanks for having me. Experimenting around making rocks. Yeah, it was fun. I've let the third rock dry for over an hour now. So I'm going to take it out of the mold and see how it turned out. So here I go. Looks like it's separating from the mold well so far. Pop and Here it is. Well, so <laughs> we did get some striping in it for sure. If you look at that, you definitely see some horizontal streaks. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll let that dry and then I'll have a look at it in the sun. Here's a shot of the three artificial rocks. So this was number one here. So you can see it's a little blotchy, the color is in it. Then we went down to number two here, which is more of an even gray color with some very subtle color in it. And then the third try is here and it has some striping in it. So I think I like this really subtle one the best. It's, yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Um, if I hold it up so you can see the shadows more like that. You can see it looks like a kind of a cliff face. And I think as these age a bit, you know, they get some natural algae on them eventually and yeah. So the next step is to figure out how I can use these in a bonsai landscape. You can see in my Portulacaria Afro forest, I have a similar kind of you know, a rock face there, sort of similar like this, except, you know, this one kind of curves around naturally and this one's quite straight. So it's more like a, a cliff face. I was thinking it might look good in something like my large forest where you could build up, you know, a cliff or something or a feature within the landscape, maybe a little rock ravine or something going between the clump of trees there something like that so I've got to figure out exactly where I'm going to use it now I can cut these rocks these cement rocks I can you know break them in half or cut them with a uh, a grinder an angle grinder to get uh, you know if I want to rearrange them so they're not just a straight cliff face it's a lot of things I can do but I, I think they would look good in a bonsai landscape I'll be using these artificial rocks probably in my larch landscape. So that'll be coming up as I get the larch landscape ready for the show. And I'll try and use these rock features. I think it'll look really cool and really miniature. So now it's time for today's update. Today's update is to the greenhouse. I have the, the back wall. I've got all the posts in place now. I do have to run my level across the top and cut the tops of the post off. So they're all even. And then I can put my, the top member across the wall. And then the next step will be digging all the seven holes 
for the four foot knee wall uh, back on the other side of the greenhouse or the south facing wall. And then the arches will go between the two, the two walls. There's baby down there. Hi baby. Where are you going? Going to check out the new wall on the greenhouse? A uh, good idea. So there's the wall or another angle. Yeah, they're all cemented in the ground. The sauna tubes go down for about a meter underground. And a lot of digging and a lot of backfilling, but uh, I'm glad they're all in now. That was, that was hard work. I really had fun making these rock cliff faces today with Josh. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>